Lisa Ryan. Hey. That's Chad Barrett. He's a big time chef. He's going to tell us everything that's going on at Food Network for the next 12 months. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can do all that. You know, I don't really want to end up in court. i got to call my lawyer before I get out of here. So. I, did, I went over to CSX to do an interview at Big Jim's house, and I got a cease and desist. How did this happen? <laughs> Miles in the Water, Mount Clemens. Congratulations, man. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, Sarah over here, the owner, uh, she's been uh, she took me on as a consulting uh, gig, and uh, I've had nothing but great things about her and her husband, Dave, and they've taken really good care of me, and uh, I think I'm doing the same for them. Yes, thank you. So, you gotta get rid of that mic, Sarah. Don't be, don't be shy. Yeah, you gotta speak up you gotta because speak you're up. in This is your place, man. This is your moment to shine. It's so interesting to me, Sarah, that, like, you know, with the restaurant, we talk so much about the restaurant boom, in, and we talked about it in the city of Detroit itself, but all of Southeast Michigan. Do you think people are more receptive to new restaurants now? We're kind of open minded. We're used to be, I'm just gonna go get a Coney and fries, but now we're kind of beyond that. Yeah, I think it's definitely a new trend of trying to get new restaurants in there. We were. An older place and then we wanted to just completely revamp and redo our entire menu and start over because the idea of bar food i know Aaron and i talk about all the time i mean you can speak to it too chad bar food isn't what bar food used to be right 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 frozen chicken fingers and mushrooms mm. i mean nothing wrong with it i love them right. but obviously it's gonna be five pounds around but i mean now you got to be so more creative so much more creative when you're putting together a menu. Sure, yeah, we put together this menu. There's a lot of worldly flavors, that, uh, southern inspired cuisine and things like that that I've served up a lot. Some of my favorite chefs from uh, Jeff Table, uh, Netflix, Joe Vibe, up there for my So I like to take southern inspired flavors, but I also have Mediterranean flavors, as well as uh, over here I have a uh, peanut veggie sandwich with a peanut butter patty um, with really? all the tapenade and tzatziki. So it gives vegetarians a lot more options than just the, the basic uh, boring flavors, and it has a uh, Amazing, uh, you know, atmosphere in the, in the uh, miles in the water as well. Um, if you guys come in, you know, I'm always walking around. I'm always liking to hear what how the food is and how everybody's doing. And you know, I'm very friendly and personable. So we always uh, invite people to come in, take pictures, and shoot autographs, whatever you guys like. I want to talk a little bit about the restaurant because I'm not coming today. We talk about that a lot on the show, and we're starting to see a resurgence of different places. You know, especially in the downtown area. Uh, with like O'Halloran and New Orleans and you have the Bath City Bistro, but I feel like you guys are offering something completely different and what I love too is the location. When you're coming around the curve, you're right there on the river. You have the ambience of being able to pull your pontoon boat right up to the restaurant and sit outside. And I know you guys did a big revamp with the whole tiki bar and the whole... Talk a little bit about um, what inspired you to change that whole area up. Well, the tiki bar... Um has always been a focal point and we wanted to clean it up and get it back to its original form and try to get it back to what we loved about it. And Does that make sense though? No, seriously though. When you, you have to, we always tell our, our kids like whatever you do, you better enjoy it because you're going to spend a lot of your life doing it, right? Yeah, yeah. Same thing when you make the investment financially but also personally into a restaurant. I can't imagine as an owner, it's got to be something that you feel proud of and it has those visual cues like the tiki and the thing that are important to you guys as well, right? Right. Me and my husband, we love the tropics, so everything we do is usually tiki related or something like that. Our house is just completely like beach stuff and that's something we've always loved. I don't get out of, we don't head too far down south. I think it was Toledo a couple weeks ago. Is that yeah. Caribbean? Is that tropical or no? I that's think, I think they're closer than the ocean in Toledo. I think. <laughs> <laughs> that's by the there's zoo. There's, there's, there's a puddle there's right there. Cedar yeah. yeah. Point? Yeah, by the Splash <laughs> Rock? So, uh, uh, Chad, I, I finished, I'm Aaron, we talked about this too, that I read the Anthony Bourdain book, which yeah. I'm like so far behind, the very first one, the, the confidential one. Right. A, how accurate was it? And B, you're in an insane culture if it's true. You people are all nuts. Yeah, I, I definitely think to be a chef nowadays, um, number one, people call us rock star chefs. Um, and I think we're all nuts because it's honestly a collective group of people that come together for a common goal. Uh, for people to enjoy the food that we eat and see, you know, a smile or somebody, you know, compliment and shake my hand about our food, it makes everything worth it to me. Um, the long hours, you know, Mother's Day week, I was working 88 hours. You know, we had Aaron in there, which was a big honor for us. And, thank uh, you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I'm mean, glad to come in. And, um, you know, we, we really enjoy it um, as a team. And I definitely think Anthony Bourdain definitely uh, hit it right on the head for sure. He's, uh, he, there's a lot of chefs out there, you know, that give up their lives with their families and time. Um, I have a daughter, uh, Lily, um, just one and a half, and I lost my son Logan three years ago. So to me, it's a huge thing to put a lot of my passion and energy into my cooking. And um, I hope that when people come into Miles on the Water or whatever restaurant I'm consulting on, they can they can feel that energy and love. 
Then the other thing we learned from the book is that every baker is crazy. Yeah. Is that true? Okay. Just yeah. bakers in general. Every, is there, yeah. I'm horrified they even go into a bakery now because they're all sure. Looney Tunes. Yeah. Okay. Pastry chefs especially. That, yeah. He does talk about it in the book. No, the it's true. Chef, like, don't yeah. mess with the starter and don't talk to the pastry chef. Yeah, no. I, I look, my brother's a pastry chef and he's a former Marine. Uh, well, once a Marine, always a Marine. But that's what he yeah. did most of his life. And I makes pastries. And when I watch him, it's one of the most intense endeavors ever. And I'm just like, I'm just going to stay away and wait till you're done. Right. Um, but one thing I find interesting about you is that you never went to culinary school. Right, yeah. So I kind of grew up, my mom was a single parent, so I grew up uh, age 14, just started washing dishes in the country club. And uh, from there, I was just like, wow, this is this is chaos, but I love it. Um, so I kind of transferred that into being able to cook when I was 16 and just ran with it. I've worked at uh, Michelin star restaurants across the country, self-taught uh, myself with books, and then I've also worked through a lot of uh, fine dining chefs in Metro Detroit. Uh, a good friend of mine, Ken Miller from Toasted Oak, really gave me a good solid two-year uh, education, and uh, I highly enjoy that, uh, learning from everybody. And I hope that when people come work with me for me that they say, oh, man, I want to be just like you. You're on the Food Network, and you're on this TV and that TV and magazine interviews. And I say, I don't want you to be me. I want you to be better than me. I want to come back five years from now, and you better be better than me, because why do I want ten of me? You know. Well, then, just to, I was going to ask you, Sarah, like, with Miles in the Water, like, when you're creating the menu, obviously, you can hear, like, chat here, who's got all these creative things as well, but you just said, like, you have a, in your mind, you have a vision of it. Yeah. So where does the creative process start between the two of you? Do you come to her with ideas, hey, I'm thinking about doing this, this, and this, or do you say, this is how I envision the menu, how can we... Pump it up. I don't, you know what I mean? Like yeah. to make it put, put your signature. Well, we've always wanted to do a smokehouse type thing, and we never actually got somebody in there to push our dream to reality. So when Chad came in, he was we were like, we want everything house smoked, we want everything fresh, made to order, and then he came in and just blew it out of the water. Okay. Have you done consider a 420 barbecue where it's just all, all the wood is green? <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, like, I'm straight edge, so I, I don't do that, so um, <laughs> unfortunately, that's not in my wheelhouse, but uh, I'm sure it's going to be in the wheelhouse yeah, soon in Ferndale. Somebody, somebody's somebody gonna, will have that somewhere. Yeah, yeah. there's going to be green cheesecakes somewhere one day, and I think everybody's going to love them. <laughs> name of the store. Name of the store. Here's an idea for you. Baked and baked. So it's, it's, a, it's a weed marijuana bakery at the uh, same time. They tried that with the cop shop, the donuts, didn't they? Yeah. 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 yeah that's right. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I love, too, is that you tried to infuse some local flavor into the menu and especially with the desserts. Yeah. And um, I told Jim right away, one of the things that I tried, and I and I can't do the dairy, I'll be honest, but I had to go for the Werner's cream puff. Game on. Yeah, game on. So uh, that, uh, as far as that, I take Werner's uh, soda and I reduce it down and I make my own ice cream from scratch in house pretty much every day, um, as well as my own cream puffs. I think it's a very creative way to use local products, local ingredients um, that are manufactured in Detroit um, to kind of, you know, get new flavors. I also have a Fago Rock and Rye barbecue sauce, which is kind of exactly the same, um, which is kind of a unique flavor. It has the sweet and the tangy um, flavors. And then I think eventually what I used to do, and I'll probably steal it here, is a uh, better made um, pretzel crust topping for um, the mac and cheese. So we'll kind of get that in there. Yeah. Love that, man. That's fantastic. Yeah. Okay, now, obviously, Miles in the Water, what you guys are doing there is miles beyond what, what the us novice barbecue people can do at home with, it, with our own smoker. However, what do you think is the biggest mistake somebody makes when they're trying to smoke brisket? I think the biggest mistake is what I do is I brine all my meats for 24 hours. So essentially, essentially salt, sugar, some herbs, and I brine it for 24 hours. Um, and it essentially that locks in the moisture. So the pores of the skin will kind of go together with the salt aspect. And it sits there and basically you can overcook it and it won't be dry. And you can brine pretty much every meat before you smoke it. And that's a huge thing. And also the flavors, too. You know, you got to explore different you know, different kinds of woods, apple wood, cherry wood, peach wood. I think a lot of people are just like, you know, I'm just going to go with the basics. Sometimes it's right. cool to infuse and mix flavors around. See, I love it. That, that's so, so cool to me about brisket. Everyone does it differently, and that's what's so neat. And everyone is raving about you guys right now. I mean, raving about the, the entire menu. Thank you. Of course, Aaron didn't bring any back for us. Hell no, uh, I yeah, didn't. So. I tore those ribs up. There was none left. <laughs> I was like, yep. Yeah, well, I got you guys some lunch here. I got some pulled pork, mac and cheese, coleslaw, and some baked beans. Uh, you guys can try it now. Good. Okay, this is the Atkins part of the diet. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I didn't bring any desserts. You got to come in for those. That's the key there. Mac and cheese is one of those things, man. You, you better bring it because there's some pretty pretty epic mac and cheese in town. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, that's what they say, but uh, I think I got this one covered. I, got I think you do. Sauce. There you go. Really? Yeah. I had it. No, I love it. That's another thing. With the dairy, I had to try everything. Dude. 
Seriously. It was that good. Okay. I was like, I want to keep eating, but I'm going to pay for it later. Seriously, though, there's so much great mac and cheese in town, so for Aaron to say that is, is high praise. Not Thank just because you. you're here, but really, it is a compliment. Yeah, I mean, well, it's one of those things there. Yeah, we really hope a lot of people just come in and just and, and give us a try. You know what I'm saying? I, I think supporting local businesses and, and people, um, like we use local purveyors as well, um, that I think it's a huge thing is to, to come together as a community and, and kind of have um, uh, not just animosity towards like other restaurants or anything like that but we're all we're all here for the common goal you know what i'm saying we're all we're all trying to you know just make business work and make life happy in a good spot so we really like to uh like to invite you guys in and see how friendly the atmosphere is competition makes you stronger yes right i mean yeah. it does that's, that's you, you you gotta have friction to make a diamond so for you guys i'm like with all these restaurants the way it's going now your restaurants are getting better and better and you guys are a great example of that yeah. a local restaurant using local folks and you're kicking ass already, and you've got it. You've got word of mouth going. Then now, what's coming up in the next 12 months on Food Network? Go. Uh, <laughs> I can't tell you everything, but that's I can. That's gonna drive him nuts. You know this because I we know there's things that. in the works, and yes. he, yeah, <laughs> there is things in the works. Um, I have a few, a few things. I wish I could tell you. <laughs> Listen, I, I really don't want to pay that fee. I tell you what, <laughs> to tell you about it. But uh, I definitely do have some TV shows coming out. Um, I have another one that I'll probably be filming in not late October. That'll come out next year. But I have one this year, um, and I have a lot of media presence. I was Metro uh, Detroit's Father of the Year this year, so that was a big thing for me. So that's cool. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a it's a big honor to do that stuff, and um, you know maybe give it a couple weeks, and I'll be able to tell you guys. I'll call in and tell you guys. Right. <laughs> in the meantime, though, miles on the water, they're in Mount Clemens, they're right there on North River Road when you come around the curve, uh, right across from the old Gibraltar Trade Center. Um, I'm excited because my niece and I were already talking about uh, taking the boat up there and docking and having some drinks on Saturday at the Tiki Bar. And it was funny because I was there, I remember what day it was, and sure enough, some people pulled up on a pontoon. And I was like, yep, this is going to be the summer spot in the Clem, definitely, if you're anywhere near the, the Clinton River. And I know you guys are going to have entertainment on Sundays for brunch. Yes. Well, it would be more like 3 o'clock, so he usually plays from 3 to 8 o'clock. Okay, so a late lunch, have some uh, cocktails, listen to some music on the revamped Tiki Bar. But, um, yeah, it's definitely going to be one of my spots this time. I don't boat in the waterfront, so we don't have boats. But okay. I do have, like, a bunch of cases of Natty Light that I'm going to duct tape together if I float up. <laughs> <laughs> You'll Perfect. still serve me if I do that? Absolutely. Yeah, we'll get you, okay. like, a, a, a floaties. <laughs> some, some wings. Some floaties, there. yeah. I think they have those giant goose inflatables. <laughs> they have a unicorn, too. Yeah, a unicorn. I think, I think Big Jim and a unicorn would be pretty pretty Wouldn't epic. that be awesome? You'll yeah. have wings and inflatable wings on the menu. That'll be, yeah, absolutely, that one. All right, man, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you, All right, thank you so much. We appreciate it. So what's going up on the food network here? <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Nice, nice try. Thanks, guys. Thank, thank you so you. much.